Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. just want to thank you, Lord. Hey, it's Pastor Robert Mills. I just wanted to uh, take a moment and uh, share with you some thoughts that, um, uh, that I had concerning our uh, Thanksgiving holiday. And uh, for some reason, this is the one holiday that I cherish the most, but seemingly gets swept under the rug uh, by society and i did not want this time to pass uh, without us sharing some time together uh, in god's word um if you look in your bibles ephesians chapter 5 uh, verses 19 and 20 uh, the king james version says speaking to yourselves in songs and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. One more time, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I just want to uh, throw this at you real quickly. I just want to talk about real briefly, uh, it's always the right time to tell him thank you. Uh, watch this, beloved. The Apostle Paul uh, pins this particular text, uh, this, this great book of Ephesians known commonly as uh, the church epistle. Uh, he pins this particular passage after spending three years teaching and preparing them for service to the surrounding community uh, some six years prior. And Paul is now finding himself behind prison bars in Rome awaiting trial by Caesar. And while he is there, he decides to pin this letter to whom he helped introduce uh, to their relationship with God. What's unique about this particular passage is uh, Paul does not write this in response to anything that he's heard negatively about the church, but he's actually writing to continue to encourage the church. It's in this letter uh, that, that we find uh, Paul reminding them uh, of a few things. He reminds them that they are blessed of God in the first chapter. He, he tells them that God has indeed chose them. He, he tells the people that they have reason to tell God thank you, A, because they are chosen. Can I tell you that uh, it's a great, great thing to know beloved if nothing else that the lord himself has hand selected you and beloved he goes on to tell them not only uh, are you chosen he says but we we have this grace that god has given us that should boost or increase our faith and and and, and paul reminds us that the lord not only chose us but he has decided, beloved of God, to be gracious unto us. He, he tells us that the Lord loves us so that he allows his grace to continue to fall down uh, upon us. He, he lets us know that we have a cornerstone uh, in our faith through Jesus the Christ. He goes on to tell them that we ought to have appreciation for what the Lord has done for us. By the time he gets into chapter number four he tells them that they need to learn or we need to learn rather to walk in unity and this is something power to powerful to the current church because it seems as though we live in such a divided state of 
church it seems as though some are coming and some are still watching some like the way church is going some are still trying to figure out which way the church is going but Paul says in order for us to go forward we must learn to walk in unity beloved I, I hope you're enjoying what I'm telling you as we press our way through this text watch this he goes on to tell them uh, by the time he gets into chapter number five, he says, remember then also to walk in love. I, I, I particularly like this because uh, too many of us are so concerned with who likes us and who we don't like. But Paul reminds us in this writing that our concern ought to be walking in love. He says, being as imitators of God, we ought to walk in love as Christ is also loved us and given himself for us as a sacrifice unto God for a sweet smelling aroma. Paul reminds us that it's our job to walk in love and to imitate the way that Christ lived and sacrificed that we ought to do the same. Beloved, this thing is so powerful and, and, and I pray that you all are catching me real quickly. Paul reminds us that it is important by the time we get to the scripture that we read he says it's important that we remember to worship now for those of us who are familiar uh, with Paul and with his uh, leadership and with his writing to the various churches Paul is one that has been so concerned with order and decency and right and righteousness that it's not very often that you see the apostle Paul speaking to us about worship and this beloved is powerful because he says listen our worship ought to be corporate but it should be focused on God watch what he says speaking to yourselves and 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 this beloved I found is powerful sometime you have to remind yourself how good God is one of the things that bother me about the local church is we spend more time waiting for the praise and worship leader, waiting for the deacons, waiting for the preacher pastor to come and encourage us or remind us about how good God is to us. But Paul reminds us that we can encourage ourselves. I hear David talking when David said, listen, I looked to my left and it didn't look good. I looked to my right, it didn't look good on that side either. He said, I found myself in a peculiar place. Those who were following me were looking now to get rid of me. And Paul says, I had to step away. I mean, David said, I have to step away by myself and encourage myself in the Lord. Paul picks up the same sentiment. He says, speak to yourself. Sometime is good to remind yourself that God is good. Some, sometime you got to tell you that God is still good despite what the circumstance looks like. God is still good. Matter of fact, nobody can really tell you how good God is to you better than you because you know your own story. You know your own testimony. You know what you've been through. You know your ups. You know your downs. You know what the Lord has brought you through and brought you from so if anybody beloved can testify to how good God is we should be able to so don't wait on me to tell you to praise him you ought to worship him for yourself watch what Paul says speaking to yourself he says in psalms and hymns and and spiritual songs and beloved this is powerful because uh, what 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 he really is trying to get us to understand is regardless if the hymn is what gets you there my 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 favorite hymn is near the cross or or pass me not those two hymns will take me closer to Christ seemingly than any other song on the market but that is what works for me your song may be praised is what I do your song may be victory your song may be shine on me but whatever it is beloved you ought to have something that speaks to you that encourages your worship watch it now Paul says songs and hymns spiritual songs this is what I truly like about this because he goes on to say he says making melody 
in your heart. Watch it, whether the song is fast, whether it's slow, whether it's a long metered hymn, whether it's a, a praise and worship song. It don't matter whether Kurt Franklin made it or John P. Key made it or James Cleveland made it. Regardless of what it is, you ought to be able to come together making melody in your heart. Let me throw this other part at you because some of us struggle with what we hear coming out of our mouth. Can I tell you the Bible rang true when they say make a joyful noise unto the Lord. It does not matter if you are on key or off key. It's what's about what's on the inside that allows you to make a melody in your heart. Watch this. He says giving thanks always for all things unto God. Listen, I'm, I'm about to sign off momentarily, but I just want to throw this at you. I'm hoping that you catch this uh, in the midst of your singing, in the midst of your worship, in the midst of your move and your moment. Make sure in that it's some thank you Jesus in there. Don't get me wrong because hallelujah sounds real good, but sometime you got to get into that thank you Lord in there. That's why I sung that song we were getting ready to go into this brief moment of worshiping together because more than anything I have to tell God thank you for everything watch what he says he says uh, for all things to God we we have to tell God thank you so I found out that I can tell him thank you for the good days. I can tell him thank you for the bad days. I can, I can tell God thank you for the things that I went through because those things ultimately pressed me closer unto him. You ought to be able to look at the things that may not seem like a good memory, but look at the aftermath of what happened because the Lord brought you through it. Whether or not it made you cry, the Lord still carried you through it. Your feelings may have been hurt, heart may have been broken, but the Lord still brought you through it. That's why Paul says always for all things we ought to be able to give God some thank you. Can I tell you beloved before I sign off you ought to just lift your hands wherever you are watching this right now and just tell God thank you. I found out that he really did not have to do it but because he loves us so he saved us and for that beloved that's enough for me to tell God thank you. If that ain't enough for you, just journey down the Via Della Rosa. Get close to the, the Golgotha's Hill, to the hill they call Calvary. Get, get close enough to you. Look up, if you will, and, and see if you don't see, still see an image there of a hanging Jesus with nails pressed in his palms, with, with a spike in his feet, with a spear in his side. Look a little closer. See if those thorns are still there. See if you see the blood running from his brow. See if you see his head done fell between the locks of his shoulder picture if you will him looking up to his daddy and saying into thy hands I commend my spirit and dying on your behalf I'm sorry beloved I may have got a little happier than I intended to but can I tell you every time I think about how good God is it takes me to another place because I realize I don't deserve to be here I realize I did not have to be here but because the Lord loved me so he gave me another chance to get right with him look here beloved not only did he die for you not only was he buried in a borrowed tomb for you but but the story says that it was early on a Sunday morning he walks out of a grave and beloved listen he came out and, and left his grave clothes in there. This is why that's powerful. It lets you and I know that whatever puts you in the grave ain't got to keep us there. And when he came out of that grave, he left whatever put him there still in there. Can I tell you what's in that grave? Your sins and mine. Can I tell you what's in the grave? Your lies and mine. Can I tell you what's in the grave? Your wrongs and mine. But guess what, beloved? He left all of them there in that grave. And when he got up, he came out with all power in his hands. And can I tell you, beloved, I'm glad. I don't know if you glad about it, but I'm sure enough glad uh, that when he came out, he made sure I could come out. Gave me an opportunity to leave the life that I lived, to live the life that I live now. 
And I'm glad about it. I'm grateful for it. I'm thankful for it. For all the things that the Lord has done for me. Matter of fact, I'm grateful for what he's done for you. I'm thankful that he saved you. I'm thankful he gave you another chance. Because listen, I don't want to get to heaven without you. I don't want to worship without you. So I'm grateful that he gave us this opportunity to worship together. Beloved, can I tell you now was a good time. Uh, to begin to worship him. Now is a good time to tell him thank you. I know what you're thinking. Uh, Black Friday shopping is coming and I ain't got the money I thought I was going to have. It's all right. Whatever you got, thank God for it. I know what you're saying. Pastor, Christmas is coming and I ain't got what I want to have for the kids. That's all right. The Lord will provide. I know what you're thinking. It ain't the same as it used to be, but I tell you this much. If you trust God, he'll make it what it needs to be. If only you would trust him. But listen, I've held you too long already. But my prayer is something was said or done that ministers to you, that encourages you, that reminds you that it's always a good time to tell him thank you. Can I tell you something? I find myself some days in the grocery store, uh, getting in the line, putting items on the, the counter, scanning and putting them in the bag. And some days I get to the end and I get upset at everything that I got to give up. But then I, I don't I don't cry about it. I I begin to get a little happy because there were days uh, where, where I couldn't afford anything. There were days that that I had to use a card that the state of Michigan gave me called the bridge card. I, that There were days where I had EBT. There were days when I was relying on unemployment. Y'all still ain't catching what I'm telling you. I got grateful because now I was a debit card. Now I was cash. Now, now I was a credit card that I was able to use to take care of my needs. And beloved, it's those times that I remember how good God is. Every day I go out, put a key in the car and turn it and it turns on. And it reminds me that God is good. You know why? There were days I had to wait on a ride. There were days I had to Uber somewhere. There were days I had to catch a cab. But the Lord allows me to get to where I need to go right now. I'm trying to get you to understand that the Lord has given us many and multiple times, multiple ways uh, to show us that he's taking care of us. And so this is a good time, beloved, in this day, in this time, in this season, that you ought to be able to tell God, thank you. Well, listen, I hope you enjoy your day. Enjoy your family. Enjoy all the fixings. But in the midst of this time that you share, make sure you pause long enough to acknowledge the one who gave it all to you. Make sure you pause long enough to tell him thank you for all that he's done and even for the things that are on the way. Don't let this day pass. Don't let this season pass without reconnecting and reuniting with the Redeemer. Make sure that your relationship with him is right. Make sure that all is in order with him. But most of all, make sure you tell him thank you. It's Pastor Mills. I hope you enjoy this day and this time. Until the next time we come together, you be blessed.